Oh fuck, they got him. Oh no, no, they, no. They, they didn't get him. him yet. They didn't get him yet, but all you right, know, all right. It's in the process of getting gotten. So. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Dennis, why don't you drop this bombshell on us? Uh, U.S. The U.S. government, our, our good old friend, the U.S. government, Bo is Jiden. Bo Jiden and friends is <laughs> and apparently. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a fucking. <laughs> <laughs> the big comfy couch. <laughs> the U.S. government and friends is suing Adobe, Adobe. for Adobe for <laughs> very um what I would consider very predatory <laughs> subscription plan practices, <sighs> which um if uh, I I suppose it's um we're recording this on a Monday. June seventeenth. So you know, for all you guys in the future listening to this, um, probably maybe old news at this point, but uh, it's kind of huge considering. Um, I think uh, every YouTuber that I've ever watched, and even people who like even just use Adobe, uh, like as like is rec- re- like I guess recreationally or whatever. <laughs> Adobe. But do you actually pronounce it Adobe? I don't know. I always just I I said Adobe many years ago, and then all of a sudden I just started calling it Adobe like a so, year ago. Have you just been visiting Chipotle too much? Because it sounds Chipotle. like the type of beef that they would have as Where a I special Chipotle, every now and again. Pull out hey, my p- laptop to go on Adobe as a my burrito, Chipotle burrito. White or brown? White beans? No beans. What kind of meat? Uh, let me get the special Adobe steak. <laughs> That's what that shit fucking sounds like, Dennis. Adobe. All right, so, so to put this context in it for you before we can yeah. do anything, Adobe. Ad- <laughs> fuck, you got, me. you got me doing it now. Adobe has been doing some very predatory practices. If you ask any artist, you'll ask plenty of artists, they will tell you it is always morally correct to pirate from Adobe. And I will yep. tell you firsthand that it is, and I'll tell you why. They were among the pioneers. They're scumbags, (laughs) first off. But the reason they're scumbags is we'll tell you firsthand. They were among the first to change their pricing models from simply purchasing the product. And this is plaguing every industry now. Like, literally Mm -hmm. everything now. More than just streaming services, which we'll get to in a bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, They were among the first to take um, their original base models where you just... You pay pay for their... The latest Adobe, Adobe Premiere or Adobe Photoshop, whatever program that you need that they make. And you buy it, it's on your computer, flat rate, whatever. Many Mm -hmm. years ago, they changed their pricing model to a subscription Mm -hmm. service. And what that means is that much like Netflix or Hulu or PlayStation Network or whatever the fuck else where you pay for an online service, you mm-hmm. have to pay monthly or annually, depending mm-hmm. on you, how you choose to pay for it, what your plan for the is, program. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the fundamental problem with that that makes Adobe that much more of pricks than all the other fucking pricks who are doing these predatory practices and business models, and yes, they are, we'll get to that in a bit once again, is because the Adobe programs are downloaded onto your fucking computer. These people, this company, for years now, have been forcing you to pay them a fucking salary, basically, <laughs> monthly. To use their shit. To use their shit, even though it is downloaded onto your computer. Which means you do <laughs> not actually own it. Once you stop paying for that, they can pull it somehow. Adobe was among the first people to do this, and it spiraled. Now you have so many companies trying to do this kind of bullshit. It's insanely predatory. I heard this Mm -hmm. on the official podcast, an older episode I listened to today, Dennis. Hewlett Packard, HP, you know, who Mm -hmm. make all the shitty office supplies and those god-awful laptops. And those printers, which we all love. Oh, which we love. You want to know what you really love about those printers? They proposed a subscription service for the ink! (laughs) <laughs> not something that's stored in a server somewhere or like cloud store a physical fucking thing a tangible object that is inside your printer they want to charge you monthly for 
You see why this is such a big issue, ladies and gentlemen. Adobe was among the first companies to do this, and uh, it just spiraled from there. But it it now, really took off somehow for them, and then dude, everyone just kind of caught, caught up with it and was just kind of like, oh, we got to do this shit too. And yeah. I mean, we already got Tesla too, you know, basically putting a subscri- uh, like service... I guess a subscription service for their car or like, you know, it's just like you need to subscribe to use your car type of bullshit, which like, you know, who the fuck wants to hear that? F- like, <laughs> I mean, Elon's doing all sorts of shit. I mean, he just got rid of yeah. likes. He just got rid of you can't see who liked your shit on like Twitter now, which is just further evidence that he's trying to make it. He's trying to change it from being a social media into a content site where the whoever mm. likes it doesn't matter and the numbers matter more. Proving further and further once and beyond that he has absolutely zero fundamental understanding of what Twitter fucking is and was all about. But yeah. Elon Musk retardation aside, uh, the prices for Adobe stuff is never cheap either. Yeah. For their creative cloud apps, which is like all the stuff together, Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe Express, Premiere Pro, it's 60 bucks a month to use shit that's downloaded onto your computer. Even just Premiere Pro, which is a video editing software that I could very easily use to edit this podcast if I wanted to, 23 bucks a month. Photoshop. 23 bucks a month, which by the way, we use Sony Vegas and GIMP programs that you pay money for for a flat rate and then they're on your fucking computer. You don't have to continually pay the company to fucking sit in their office and fucking jack off like the fucking rich pricks that they are. We don't like Sony either, but we're not tooting their own horn over here. For different reasons, we, we don't like Sony, but... Yeah, for at least for their video editing software and among other things, they're not doing these predatory practices at the very least, not yet. And even though, and much like the government's like slow response to literally fucking everything, after many, 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 many years of Adobe completely scamming and fucking over college students who literally have to pay for these programs in their fucking like dorms and shit, the art students that like are already, you know, like getting an art degree, which, you know, they're already spending a fuck ton of money on versus yeah. like them to get told to fuck off at a McDonald's application. But regardless, all the money that they have to pay just to show off their amazing talent, fucking over like the people at the bottom the most, the government has finally caught on and they are suing adobe for it claiming uh that the u.s government on monday sued adobe today accusing the maker of photoshop and acrobat of harming consumers by enrolling them in its most lucrative subscription plans without clearly disclosing important terms in a complaint filed in the san jose california federal court the government said adobe failed to adequately disclose hefty early termination fees sometimes reaching hundreds of dollars when customers sign up for annual paid monthly subscription plans the government said adobe hides important terms in fine print and behind text boxes and hyperlinks clearly discloses the fees only when subscribers try to cancel and makes canceling an or uh, i don't know how to pronounce that onerous 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 Oner- onerous thank you that thank you, Adobe man, and uh, complicated <laughs> process. Monday's lawsuit seeks civil fines and injunction and other remedies. Adobe did not immediately respond to a request for comment. I, you already know how I feel by me venting. I've been talking way more before Dennis has even been able to really get a word in, but I think this stems into far grander issues that I'm sure Dennis is going to bring up without me even needing to say them, but. In in conclusion, before I even continue here, if buying something does not mean you own it, then piracy is not stealing. Yep. It's not. It's really not. It's not. Considering you, yeah. how much they are fleecing you. <laughs> Mind you, like, I, you know, like, looking back, right, we've had several several subscription plans even from like early on like you know uh blockbuster even netflix right if we're gonna i guess take a trip down memory lane over here like from what we always gathered like and from what was always kind of advertised with a lot of these subscription plans it was always fairly clear cut you pay us let's say monthly or annually this set uh amount of money and we provide you a service that's it and simple. simple yeah like a lot of it like i mean everything has like an end user agreement so like you know they all have like a eula that like everyone 
never reads. <laughs> so yeah. like, yes, by clicking know. by clicking agree, you sign off on Apple sewing your mouth to the butthole of another iTunes user. Yes, yes we all mm-hmm. saw the we all saw the South Park. Yeah, the, on the fine print, of course. But In like you know, print. for Adobe, it's like the fact that um that it's just now that the U.S. government is now catching on kind of does speak volumes a bit because of the fact that like you know for one we've known adobe's been doing shitty things for years and this is not even to people who actually use their apps at all or like even like even if like you're not within the the tech sphere like too much you nobody has good things to say about adobe ever I, I believe there was even one, uh, like a one show that I watched where like this, like a dude cursed out Adobe because like their fucking thing just shitted on itself and it just broke. Like I, I forgot what show it was, but oh, I remember no- it was called the Double D Experience because I literally just fucking did that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I know what you mean. Mind I don't you- use I don't use Adobe products. I used to have yeah. to use Premiere in high school for video production stuff. Mm-hmm. Never liked it as much as Vegas. And then they went down the whole predatory route. I'm like, yeah, I'm never yeah. fucking, I'm, I'm never using this bullshit. Cause no. like, again, like for software, this is the reason why that like, even, um, in my, in my time, like studying like it and even like kind of just looking into like, kind of just looking into the tech sphere as like a hobby, like current events wise, like just kind of seeing what's going on over there. Um, even as like a passerby again in the, uh, in those years, like I've never heard a single good thing about Adobe ever. It's like people can argue, okay, yeah, like their apps are cutting edge and like, you know, it's obviously like the, if you're going to succeed in whatever like kind of um, industry, right? Like that, you know, it's a part Dude. of, you, yeah, use Adobe. That's but the worst it's, too. It's, so it's, many different <laughs> industries have complained about it too. And that's how you, yeah. that's why they have the reputation they do. Audio mixers. Oh, like audition. We have to pay 23 a month for audition now. Animators. Uh, we have to pay 23 a month for mm-hmm. Animate, even though it's on our computer. Even people who would just need, like, stock images, like, to use visuals on our shitty podcast. $30 a month to do this! <laughs> Google Images, a uh, big fucking dick. Oh, there's a big fucking dick. I can put that in my podcast. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> like, uh, holy fuck. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 yeah. Like, here's the thing. Here's, um, this is from Reuters. Um, it's another uh, news outlet. Um, link me, that, link me that article when you can. Yeah. So the U.S. government sued Adobe on Monday, accusing the Photoshop and Acrobat maker for harming consumers by concealing hefty termination fees in its most popular subscription plan and making it difficult to also cancel those subscriptions. They planned uh, compl- fitness it. Yeah, they yeah essentially they gym membership their fucking uh, subscription plan. Which that's they, another example. Yeah, f- to yep, all of us exactly. here, gym memberships as well, especially Planet Fitness. They're insanely predatory yeah. with their cancellation fees and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That, that's just one. Uh, that's another like multitude of examples of that. Kind Even of shit. though they always say in the commercials, it's like no cancellation fees. I'm like fucking fuck you, bullshit ass, like lying motherfuckers. Like, I'm sorry to spin off right here, but can I tell you right now? When I found out the Lunk Alarm was real. <laughs> you just had to change gyms, huh? <laughs> I felt like I was living in a fucking South Park episode, dude. I swear to God. <laughs> I thought that was just like a commercial thing to be like, look, we're the inclusive gym. You don't have to be shredded to be here. We're all about uh, body positivity and security. Yeah, yeah. And then so the joke in the commercial is that like if somebody's going, like stretching too much, an mm-hmm. alarm goes off. It goes, uh, uh. <laughs> Apparently, that's real at some that's locations. Real. Yep. Um, although, the ones that I've what gone to... What kind of Twilight Zone shit is that? The ones that I go to, it's always off. So, I mean... Yay, I guess. But, like, you know... <laughs> yay. It's it's like, yeah, they actually have, like, the, the, the alarm on the wall. They just don't have it on, essentially. Uh-huh. Like, that's about it. But, um... Yeah. So keep going, like, going keep reading, back, keep reading. Yeah, like so then going back to um like this article and even just kind of talking about like subscription plans in general. Um da, 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 according to the complaint um oh no, in a complaint filed in San Jose, California, federal court, the FTC said Adobe buries the fees which sometimes reach hundreds of dollars and other important terms in its annual paid monthly subscription plan in the fine print or behind specifically text boxes and hyperlinks this is in the eula guys this is in their fucking end user agreement 
And according to the complaint, Adobe calculates early termination fees at 50% of the remaining payments when consumers cancel in their first year. Jesus Christ. The FTC also said Adobe forces subscribers who want to cancel online to navigate unnecessarily through numerous pages while those ca- uh, while those canceling by phone are often disconnected or are forced to repeat themselves to multiple representatives and encounter resistance and delay tactics from those representatives. It's insane. <laughs> wow. Two uh, executives of Adobe are also the defendants. They... David Wadwani, uh, who's the president of Digital Media Business, and Maninder... S- what the fuck kind of last name is Sony? this? So- Sony? 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 Yeah, it must, must be related, huh? Uh, That's a conflict of interest. Uh, <laughs> Adobe trapped consumers into year-long subscriptions to... Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Hidden early so, termination yeah. fees, numerous cancellation yeah. hurdles, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, just yeah. really generally scummy shit. That, like, they finally get got from the U.S. government for, which took a while. Like, you know, I guess one could argue, but hey, at least better late than never with this shit. Yeah, and, like, thank you for reading all that, Dennis, because it Mm -hmm. just reminds me, like, look, I mean, we're not... The fact that everything is a subscription service, that's what we're complaining about now. Like, the spiraling that companies like Adobe and, like, even Netflix made this happen. But here's the difference... You know, we'll go off, like, we'll probably, we, we, we still got, like, 40 minutes. Like, we're, we're definitely going to go off into why streaming services also fucking suck donkey yeah. cock now. But, like, even before they sucked donkey cock, you had to pay, paying for the donkey cock made sense. Because, at the very least, it's a con- it's not even just a matter of convenience or convenience fees, which that's what they're hiding behind now. Look how convenient our shit is, so we can do whatever the fuck we want. No, it's... A matter of, like, there, it's a, how do I phrase this? It's an online server-based medium. They, uh, Netflix and companies like them need to pay other companies like Google or whatever mm-hmm. to have space on their servers to run, to run, you know, their online platforms, to run Netflix, to run Hulu, to run all this shit, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. They have to pay for those monthly because, like, those are, you know, Google has to, like, you know, spend time, money, and resources to maintain those. Google and whatever other companies that they use to have the, harbor those servers and harbor mm-hmm. that data. Um, so, for, like, having all this stuff on one platform, you have you don't have the convenience or the lack of convenience of having to get up, put another disc out, or, like, just move it all over and over again. Now you have everything you want to watch, allegedly. It's not true anymore. Mm-hmm. But, you know, back in the whole idea is that you have everything you want to watch on one little space right here at the convenient fingertips. It's a service. You're paying for a service. That's different netflix makes sense because like they give you access to all these different things or hulu gives you access to all these different things they add things they remove things whatever you to get access to all that you pay a service because they have to pay upkeep fees as well as well as you know get you know their money back so they can actually profit on providing the service and providing it well like yeah you know hopefully it also works well (laughs) yeah Shout out to we've encountered shitty subscription services before where it just didn't work shout out to paramount plus (laughs) <laughs> it is so fucking bad. It's unbelievable. Laggy, change like the uh, decent Janky audio, fuck, whatever. Man. Here's the difference: when you pay a subscription uh, fee to Adobe, you're not paying for them to upkeep anything. You're not paying for a service. It's not a service that they continuously update or fix. It's not a service that you need uh, cloud internet access to or whatever, or at the very least didn't used to be. It's a program that you purchase and is downloaded onto your computer. The fact that they changed it to an online cloud service Mm -hmm. lets lets you all know that in the boardroom they decided, hey, we can make it so these people don't actually own it, but to use Mm -hmm. it, they just have to pay for it continually to get access to it instead, like how Netflix does. Even though something like a photo editor is not something that you should have to continuously pay a service for to access. It should mm-hmm. be something you purchase that you now own and is on your computer. The fact that you have to pay a subscription service just to access it now goes to show that companies, because it's legal, there's no law against this now, because as we spoke about earlier, the government takes forever to fucking learn about these things. Look at Taylor Swift. It took, like, the AI porn being made of her for them to finally realize, hey, this AI imitating shit is fucking bad. Mm-hmm. 
It takes them forever to acknowledge these things. But as a result, there's no laws stopping them. You can make anything a subscription service now. Like I mentioned earlier, in case I don't cut that part out of the podcast, HP is literally trying to charge you a subscription service on a physical, tangible object. (laughs) That's not a phone. That you actually have to pay money to have service provided to it because the phone companies need to pay to have service provided to it so they can benefit. That's different. That makes sense. Here's a piece of paper. It lets me know how to, like, handle, you know, my, my, uh, my scar that I got from having my cyst removed. Imagine if the doctor's office, like, made me pay ten bucks a month to look at this. So I can know what to do to treat my injury. This physical, tangible object in my hand. A company is trying, and I don't know if they're succeeding, to do that right now. Ever since Adobe did this shit, every company is trying to make fucking everything a subscription service because they're also trying it's to see insane. how much how much they can get away with too exactly and i feel as if like this was essentially they kind of pushed a little too far and now finally the u.s government is uh is hitting back on it but i hope they fucking liquidate them like they're doing the alex jones right now i swear to god you know it's so funny you say that because like i don't really think that was recent news too a judge ordered him to be uh dissolved like oh yeah, and like didn't basically um all the funds go to like the uh the Sandy the, Hook, the Sandy um, Hook families, parents, right? Yes, yeah. So then going back to this real quick, like the uh, I you know how we we've, we've even said in this podcast before that some companies are really just too big to fail, right? Yeah. Like Amazon and a few others, like thing like if they ever got bankrupt, like the U.S. government would step in and just like obviously bail them out because yeah. they're like they're just essential that in that way, right? Yeah. I don't know if Adobe is really. Truthfully, I don't think they are. I I do not think they're on the same level as Google or Amazon. I do Considering not Considering they so. rely on companies like Google, like to, you know, to provide them like the means to turn what should be a downloadable program into a subscription service. Yeah. The fact that they're relying on Google for that goes to show that Google is on a completely different plane of like providing and, other businesses with the means to exist. And not to mention a lot of the services that we use from Google, speaking mostly about Google Suite, and if you guys are have ever, you know, worked for a company, like, I'm sure, like, you've probably dabbled in it and such, that is all free. Dude. That's all services that they, like, provide for you for free. Like, there is no payment attached to it or anything other than maybe some services, I guess. Like, if you are a business, like, they would expect you to pay. But the thing is, is that Google started as a internet-based service and then it moved on to cloud adobe started as a software uh sort of company and providing those programs as products not services as products at first now they've switched over to being a service uh kind of based industry and people fucking across the board it just seems just fucking hate them for it because They fleece every single body. It don't even matter who you are. Like, you are getting fleeced of your money, like, every month. Because Adobe, I think, is in the same vein of, like, those cable guys from South Park. And they're just rubbing their nipples, like, in front of you. Because it's just like, where are you going to go, huh? Now, what? You're going to use GIMP? You want to use Photoshop, man? Like, where are you going to go? They just continue to rub their nipples right in front of you. Like, as, like, you pay that fucking subscription fee and then if you try to cancel well there's a 50 percent over like over fee that you have to fucking give us because you try to cancel early it's just so like (laughs) yeah david go ahead i just look they give the a part of the reason they got them by the balls too is because so many companies they pay the business fees who can actually afford these stupid things rather than the college students or the art students that they prey on to be forced to use adobe and stuff like that um it sucks, because, like, a lot of these, like, artists and stuff, even if they, they don't want to, even if they think it's shitty or they don't want to pay these fees or whatever, when they're in college or whatever, they have to use them. When I was applying mm-hmm. for podcast jobs, right, and I was, like, talking about, like, my experience hosting a podcast and editing a podcast, Pro Tools. Pro Tools is always in their list there. Like, do you know how to use Adobe Pro Tools? Because that's what we use for our podcast. And it's like, they're, they're coasting off the brand name. 
to mm. do like insanely shitty things with it when even like the music designers or like the the music theory people like the musician the musicians that I talk to when I mention pro tools to them or audition to them they 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 get physically ill Dennis like one <laughs> I was at a party and like I was talking to like this music girl about it and she literally barfed on me when I was telling her that about like you know audition and how like every podcast job I was applying to like like had like pro tools on it. She also had like nine like 19 shots so like that was probably another reason why she barfed on me. But regardless, all right? Like the point is everything being a streaming service now is just fucked. Because companies know it's way more profitable to do, will make way more money just by sitting in the office, like, fucking blowing each other and, like, jacking off in the corner while doing literally zero extra work besides paying whatever service fees it is to upkeep this, which oftentimes are way outweighed by the amount of people that does that. What was that revenue stream in that, uh, Reuters article that you linked me? What was it? Five billion this quarter? Yep. Five billion dollars Adobe has made off of this, off of their revenue yep. in subscriptions. Not period. This quarter. Just Ending the March first, first three months yeah. of the fucking year. Five billion dollars. Wonder how many fucking employees they laid off this year on top of that. Ooh. We really are in late stage capitalism, dude. The fact that everything is becoming like... I'm really starting to sound like a Redditor in the last couple of episodes of this podcast, but it's fucking true. The fact that everything becomes this is so bad. Like, cloud storage games, most come... Square Enix, on uh, to mm. put one example, Nintendo doesn't normally do these things, but Nintendo partnered with Square Enix to put all the Kingdom Hearts games on the Switch. They're all cloud games. Mm. Which means I guarantee once the Switch 2 has been out for like a couple of years, gone. Pulled. Not, not available anymore. Much like the whole streaming service itself, like, Wii U and 3DS support, gone. That's a little different because that's more of a game preservation a issue rather than, hey, the games that you could play on this, you can't play anymore. Nintendo doesn't do that practice as often as other companies does. The only ones I could think of is Mario 35, but it was a free game. So, like, that mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Nintendo's actually still way behind the curve on that, which is good because Nintendo's Nintendo, and we've had this conversation a million times. Them being as archaic as they are is both a good and a bad thing. But other ones, Helldivers. When that situation was going on, where they got mm -hmm. pulled from all those countries because of the PSN issue, they bought the game. Can't play it there anymore because now you need to be online when you play it. Mm -hmm. Ugh. I'm trying to think of the example right now. There was a racing game or something along the likes. I have to look this up. The Crew uh, video. Yeah, here it is. The Crew. It's a racing game. It was made, I think, by, of course, Ubisoft. <laughs> <laughs> Our the, favorite video game company. Here's the most egregious example that I can think of. And again, shout outs to the official podcast. My favorite podcast at this point, if you guys don't know. Besides <laughs> the Double D experience. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, thank you, uh, random fan in the background. I'm glad you could see my nipples. Uh, Filled in yes. front of a live studio audience. <laughs> is what we're saying. Take it off. Take it off. Take. Okay. Have you ever heard of a video game called The Crew, Dennis? I have not. The Crew Explain to me. is a series of video games, uh, racing games from Ubisoft. Uh, just standard racing games. Trick out your car, you know, drive, developed by Ivory Tower and in partnered with Ubisoft. As of all the crew games that have happened, there's The Crew, The Crew Wild Run, Crew 2, Crew Motorfest. That's the one that dropped last year. The original Crew, which I think dropped in... I don't even 2014. remember. 2014, something like that. You could buy that game. Well, you can't buy it anymore, but if you bought that game because they want you to play the new ones, what happened is they shut it down. They made a change, an update in the game, an update that you have to do to continue playing the game, an offline video game, a single player only game, by the way, the original crew. It's a single player only game, which means you should be able to boot it up, play the game, have fun, do whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they updated it to make it so you have to be online to play it, to play the single player game. And they put backlog encryptions in it as well, so you literally can't even mod it to like change it or anything like that. You literally have to be online to play an offline video game. But now that's not true anymore, so good news. 
or bad news, I should say, my bad, I get those confused sometimes, even though they're polar opposites. You can't play the crew at all anymore, but because even though it's a single player game, you have to be online to play it, they pulled support. So to make you uh, buy the new ones instead. Which means there's a video game, an offline video game, single player only. You don't need to fucking be online to play it by no reason other than corporate greed that you bought and paid for with actual money that the company just fucking took. They just took back. Do you get your money back? No! <laughs> Fuck no! So explain to me, even as somebody who doesn't pirate because it is immoral and unethical, and I also don't know how, uh, it's really the main reason. <laughs> I pirated Why? so many games. I know you have, young. I know you have. So now, if a video game company can just do that, take a product away from you that you bought and paid for, we're the fucking criminals for pirating one that would not even be on the market anymore or one that even is from a shitty company Get the fuck out of here man this is why piracy is bigger now than it has ever fucking been and is only continuing to grow yeah even the quality of like some piracy video uh, like movie websites and stuff that you go to is better than the streaming services now i've even heard this people who have pirated copies of like adobe's uh software it's actually better it runs better and it's actually more stable than their actual fucking service. I don't know if I have something like that because I I don't pirate stuff just because, again, I don't know how and I, I usually feel like I don't have to for the most part with the money I spend or what I need. I have Sony Vegas. I have an old version of Sony Vegas. It's what I use to edit this podcast. It is Vegas Pro 14. It doesn't update anymore because it's the old version or whatever. I think. At least I think it doesn't update anymore. But I got it for 25 bucks. Instead of like two, four hundred for however much it is. How? Humble Bundle. How does Humble Bundle work? I have no idea. But, uh, but the point <laughs> the is... The economics I, of it, we just don't know. No clue. They they make zero money, but it's a charity, so you know. I, uh... Yeah, so I have that. So I have what is essentially uh, an old version of something, which would have basically been a pirated version of it if I just got it for free or something like that. Is that what I've done? And it's better than literally any Adobe product that I would have to pay monthly for would be because I paid 25 bucks. Flat. Let me, Not let me 25 just, a month. And I get this just, podcast out every single <laughs> fucking week, baby, without missing a single week in fucking almost like four and a half years. Damn, that's pretty good. Why would I ever do Adobe? Please, Dennis, also, I'm done. Let me just add something. I'm done. Because, going back to piracy just for a brief second here. By all means. We all remember the wonderland that was the piratebay.org. For all of you guys. Your fiddle dee dee. Being a pirate is alright with me. We have pirate. Oh, I, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys have like been on the Pirate Bay, uh, you know, from ye, ye long ago, like thing, you know, when things were just so unregulated. <laughs> on the internet. Shit was just like fucking buck wild over there, man. Yeah, yeah. Early 2000s internet, and then even just going on to 2010s, shit was a wild ride, honestly. Like, and especially when it came to, um, when it came to piracy of uh, digital products and even, you know, who the fuck here didn't pirate a movie? I pirated Iron Man, like, as soon as that shit was on DVD because I didn't want to pay for the DVD. I've heard of people literally having higher quality rips of some uh, somebody's Blu-ray, yeah. like them just ripping it from Blu-ray, than you can even get by paying on a streaming service. Yep. It takes, like, 30 minutes. If you buy a show on Google Play, if you buy a show on Google Play, full quality doesn't kick in until a half hour later. So when you buy it, you literally have to watch it at 240p max. After until you it... pay money for it. And you don't know that's going to be the quality until you do it. Why is, why is it covering? Why are pirating? Why are people pirating? It's because you all fucking suck so hard now. They they do. They really do. And not to even mention, of course, now, I'm going, now even going into gaming, which... For a long time, when I found out that, oh shit, I could download actual games and play them, and they're stable, shit was wild, man. I downloaded so many fucking games. It was like, it was unreal. 
how much le- illegal activity I was doing from my fucking computer. <laughs> but <laughs> but what I'm getting at too is that you, you stole nowadays, from corporations. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Fuck them. Anyways, uh, <laughs> fuck Sony. Um, I, I guess one thing that I'm getting at too is that nowadays we have. You know, we have a lot of um, software that is running in the back for a lot of games, like anti-cheats. Um, and one other thing that uh, I'm sure that, you know, for anyone who's an avid PC gamer in our uh, in our midst, in our audience, you know about De Novo, which De Novo is quite possibly one of the worst things that ever happened for PC gaming, like flat out, ever. And uh, David, what is De Novo? Uh, right off the bat, please explain to the audience what De Novo is. I I, I don't know actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you're more of an avid like PC gamer than I am. Okay, I am okay. assuming it is an anti cheat software. Uh, yes, it okay. is a DRM anti cheat software. And I'm uh, assuming it, by your tune, it is it is that also it sucks? it's um. Quite possibly one of the most, uh, this is what Steam community calls it, an extremely invasive anti-cheat software that runs at ring zero at the kernel level of your operating system, and it gives full access to your machine. Bro. Just to, just to not cheat? You That's don't. what it is, yeah. You're- like, it's just literally always there running in the background. And I've had games that have used De Novo that my fucking performance, I run a fucking i9 and 3080. Why in the fuck are my frames down in the mid 30s? What the fuck is that? <laughs> It's because the graphics card starts with 30, which stands for how many frames it runs games. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh, uh. I'll choke you. <laughs> I'm already, I'm already... I'm you probably already, like that. I'm already pretty much naked, just do it. Uh. <laughs> so, Harder, daddy. You know, and for anyone, obviously, who've, you know, again, we've... We've been on this road before, like, of just shit we don't want running in the background. And I guess... This is straying a bit from um, our shit with Adobe right now. But I guess where I'm saying that like this kind of all coincides a bit is that companies, again, over the years, it's been happening for about a decade, I feel. They have just been really like poking us and just seeing what the fuck we, they could get a, what, what they could get away with continuously. And over the years, um, I think this is definitely um, us as consumers uh, fault uh, from what I'm about to say. Um, we kind of let them get away with a lot of shit, honestly. I think there is just some accountability that we kind of have to put in uh, to put into perspective here because even me hearing, oh, my Amazon subscri- Amazon Prime subscription has uh you know, gotten, uh, the subscription cost is, uh, increased because of, okay, like, let's say they're adding a new service or whatever the fuck. And like, obviously Mm -hmm. the Amazon prime we got from, let's say about from what we kind of subscribe to from, let's say, I don't know, like maybe five, six, seven years ago is obviously not the same Amazon prime that like, you know, we have today. The services that they provide obviously is much more vast. And, you know, one could even argue like, well, I don't really use all this shit. Well, that's the same argument in which cable companies also fleece you because it's like, you know, well, all of our shit is a package deal. Most people don't really have home phones anymore. At least a lot of people that I know, at least they don't have home phones anymore because it's a useless appliance. We all just kind of have our shit done through cell phone anyways. And not to mention landlines. Like you got, remember, you know how like you guys get like those um, spam calls? Imagine what the fuck a landline would sound like if it got spam calls the same frequency that you guys do. Don't have cell phones. Still have one. Still have I one, still yeah. have one. It's all we get on it. Yeah. So therefore, like, again, it's a useless appliance. And again, and it's just another example of how cable companies, cable, ugh, cable companies will just fleece the shit out of you. And like you, they will happily take it because of the fact that there is almost no alternative out there in the world when it comes to, at least in the United States, not that I'm saying we're the world, sorry, but like, you know, at least as far as the, this country goes, there's really no alternative for us. Like, that this is the best we got and this is the best we can do right so like 
And we've been get we've been we've been letting them get away with a lot of this shit for for fucking how many years now? And I almost feel that like this is like almost kind of getting to the point where like I even think Adobe I'm pretty sure they even believe themselves to be a monopoly because who else are people going to? I mean like you know obviously people They're are not. okay, we got well well this is the thing. We got Sony, right? We have their products that of course like you know in which david you know uses right but the thing is is that even in university which is already a business like college itself is already a business on its own and not to OG mention even like service yeah and even going into like you know uh wanting to forge a career in media right obviously like thing you're gonna have to have some editing software and such and you're gonna have to like kind of uh you know learn it the fact that like they even force you in a lot of those universities to have to get a, these Adobe uh, subscription services, like uh, these plans, to use their um, not products again, their services, because you're not buying shit. You're paying a subscription fee to use those programs, not that you own them. And it's no wonder too that, like again, I mentioned a lot of people who've pirated. Um, Adobe products say that the pirated version works way better than the fucking actual, uh, you know, program that Adobe, like, you know, uh, has out there. Like, just because, for one, there's no communication between that, let's say, uh, pirated version and their server because they're trying to see, oh, is your copy legit? Do you have a license to use that? Blah, blah, and whatever. Like, there's no communication going on with that. It's the reason um, why, like, a good chunk of the reason why that it runs so much better. It's a matter of, like, people being technolo technologically inept. Because I both agree and disagree with you in saying it's our fault. Because in some ways it is. There's video games I don't play because I do not want to support their unethical practices. Mm -hmm. I agree it's also most people's fault because sometimes a game comes out and people just fucking forget everything. Like, I'll see people, like, talking about how horrible... Short-term like, memory. Oh, how horrible Blizzard is, blah, blah, blah. And I've seen people who say that who are getting so hyped for the next fucking Overwatch hero. It's like, you yeah. are fucking, like... You're like a fucking, like... You're a light switch. You could just be turned on and off, like, a, with the flick yeah. of a button. And they know that, too. In that sense, those practices, I'll say it's their fault. Or the consumer's fault. But it's unfair to just completely blame the consumer. Oh, no, no. A lot I'm of not blaming completely medias. the consumer. I'm okay. not blaming them Okay, then I was going to ask, I'm actually, saying that it's a two-way street because, it? for one, it's half and half. A good portion of the blame is still on consumers, I'm saying. I was going to ask what your ratio was. I was yeah, going to yeah. ask what your ratio was, like a good half and half, okay. Because, like, a lot of the times it is definitely still their fault when there's just something, a media that we very much want to enjoy, and there's just no other way to do it. Or in the sense that a lot of people either still think it's morally wrong to pirate, which from, in some cases, I mean, it still can technically be. If you be, think like this, you're an idiot. No, I I'm believe sorry. in ethical and unethical piracy. I will say that. Stealing, pirating literally everything, that's a different story. But I will okay. say more than, listen, I, listen, 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 listen. Before I say that, before anything else, a lot of people, beyond ethical or morality reasons, they just want the actual convenience of streaming despite everything streaming is doing like going back to cable basically pulling our favorite shows that we want to watch anymore shout outs to when i bought hulu literally just to rewatch the venture brothers to find out it's not on hulu anymore and it was on max and i had to cancel Damn, the hulu subscription oh yeah literally just for that show and uh and stuff like that right despite all them like returning to cable despite it b basically being a worse version of cable now at this point like with how much you have to pay for individual streaming services people still want that convenience it's still better than cable because you can still watch whatever you want whenever the fuck you want and you have that big library yes it's different because you don't technically own them but it's the same with cable not being able to watch it right and the reason i'm bringing all of that up is because Nobody wants to sift, like, none of us, not everybody knows how to pirate. Not everybody knows how to sift through the antivirus that you have to do in order to pirate. No, people don't want to, like, learn. It's the same with fighting games, right? People, there are a lot of people who do not want to learn how to do something to do something leisurely. They want to get home after a long day of work, drink a beer while doing their shitty podcast, and then, like, go watch whatever it is they're going to watch on their fire stick behind them. They don't want to have to do work in order to, like, do the leisurely things. You mm -hmm. ever see you go in Best Buys and you see, like, the people who work there or you meet a nerd in the streets or whoever and you just vibe because you both know nerd shit or whatever and you know they're the type of person, like, to do all that kind of stuff in order to, like, do, like, the ethical right thing or the very least to, like, 
watch something, like, like, pirated ethically or whatever, instead of, like, you know, basically just doing all the work to sift through the viruses that you might get from pirating and all that shit. Most people don't want to do that. They don't understand that, like, anything about it beyond consumerism. They just want to, like, sit down and watch their shit and have it be convenient to them, and that's what mm -hmm. these companies are taking advantage of. And that, I don't blame the average consumer for, for not knowing how to do. Yeah, they're ignorant, so maybe we just have an uneducated yeah. masses about this. Maybe that's what it is. So in that mm -hmm. vein, Dennis, you can very much blame the consumer, but it is still on the wolf for eating Little Red Riding Hood, not Little Red Riding Hood for simply wanting to walk the basket of treats to her fucking grandmother like she's supposed to do after a long day of work. I came up with that analogy on the spot. You get what I mean? I, I thought that one was pretty broken, if I'm being completely honest. Pretty, pretty broken. Mm -hmm. Listen. Multiverses. To go back to gaming for a second. You cannot tell me that this is the consumer. So, okay, well, some gamers are really fucking dumb and they have no social skills. But the point is there's a lot of people who like multiverses. I don't know why. I'm not a fan of that game personally. If you like it, you like it. That's great. Too slow for me, among many other things. But the reason I don't play multiverses is because that game does a plethora of unethical business practices. It's trying to basically be the Fortnite of platform fighters, Dennis. There's, mm -hmm. like, you know, battle passes for characters and skins and shit. It's free to play, which is how it gets you at the beginning, and then you mm -hmm. wind up paying more for the whole roster of characters. It was, like, $210 to actually have the full roster at launch originally because the game only comes with five, then you have to buy the rest. I think they went back on that because of Backlash. And, uh... Oh, you also have to be online to play the game, mm -hmm. even offline, which means tournament organizers can't even run offline locals for it. But we want to market this game to the competitors. Fucking dipshit. Fucking cockhead for brain. Fucking Warner Brothers, bro. And here's where I'm getting at with this one. All these decisions are not player first game's fault. Or even my friends who I know who, who got hired. Other Smash commentators who work for player first games now. They're the community managers for that shit now. Oh, to shit. give outreach to the fucking, you know, mm -hmm. the Smashers and like the platform fighter players and gamers. And they do great jobs at all of that. Shoutouts to all of them. I trust them. I don't trust Warner. Nobody should trust Warner Bros. For crunching all the shit and, like, crunching player-first games to do these things. <sighs> I'm bringing all this up because let's give one example, right? The Iron Giant. He's a playable character in multiverses. Yep. The literal Iron Giant. You can play as him. One of the best He's animated movies of all time. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna st stick by that. This shit was awesome. I love Still that Still never movie. seen it. It's really good. You should watch it. Vin Diesel's really, best really work, good. if you ask me. <laughs> He's really good at playing animated characters that just don't say shit. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. He does say, Me, Superman. <laughs> and then he blows up. <laughs> Vin Diesel's best work, unironically. Um, Before Groot, which I'm sure a lot of you forgot oh, he was that decent, he was in. He was decent in Saving Private Ryan. I forgot he was in that. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, but yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Sorry, on, Vin. Sorry, Vin. Sorry, Vinny. But point is, the Iron Giant. Staple unethical business practice. Because here's what happened. The Iron Giant is fucking broken. Yeah, he really is. Very I've overpowered. seen that character in action. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of nuts. Very overpowered-ass character. And so you want to know what they did? Paywalled him. No, they didn't paywall them. All the characters were already paywalled. They're they're already way ahead of that curve, Dennis. Don't you worry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what? Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Deleted him. No. F they actually did. They removed him from the game because to like for maintenance. They said we got to bring the Iron Giant back into the shop. Uh -huh. Which, while a character being broken, then there's definitely characters in Nasby too that I wish were not in the fucking game. There's characters Dang. in Smash that piss us off. Ang's getting gutted. I'm so happy. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Well, he's not getting gutted. You know how it is, but he's getting he's a just lot. He's getting nerfed. You're getting that long-deserved nerf. A lot of nerfs, which I'm very happy about. Thank God. But point is, the characters like Mr. Krabs, who I probably hate even more than Ang at this point, you, we always joke and saying, just fuck it. Remove him from the game. Fucking hate this character. Fuck. Mm -hmm. There's, we throw our controllers down. Mm -hmm. We have to pay $200 for a new one. Point is, <laughs> it's bad or different when it actually happens, because what if... What if you bought Iron Giant? They're not getting your money back. What if you paid for him? What the fuck? When did Are you we just... Do? When did we just start letting companies do this? I don't get it. I don't get it. Tubi, Dennis, the cheapest uh, streaming service out of all the streaming services, which is basically the online cable package was the most 
streamed platform out of all the platforms, more out of the, out of the last uh, year, I believe, or the last couple of months, I forget the statistic. Better than Disney+, Plus, better than Hulu, better than Netflix, better than everything, and it's because it's affordable. They're actually learning the curve, and I'm hoping that these other streaming services are gonna finally get the fucking picture that we don't want to pay upwards of how much money a month just to have our favorite shows removed on a whim. People are finally starting to realize that we don't actually own any of this shit. It's bad. But at the same time, I don't want to go back to just full physical media. I like it for video games still, but DVDs, I don't know if I want to do that every time because, you know, even that can, like, rust eventually. So I like the whole idea that, like, some services are trying to implement where, like, if you like something enough, instead of just paying the monthly fee to just be able to watch it for free, just in case it gets removed off the platform or anything, or above all else, if, you're, if your internet goes down, you can just download it. Puss and Boots the Last mm -hmm. Wish, that's what I'm going to do for YouTube. I'm gonna- mm -hmm. I'm gonna pay the upwards fee instead of renting it to just download it, so even if I'm, like, offline or whatever, or, like, I can still watch it, I'd still have to be online mm -hmm. for YouTube, but you get what I'm saying. But then, even gaming companies, and gaming companies are the worst with this, you can buy something, pay physical money for just a fucking product, and then they do all this shit where you have to be online to play it, and then they pull it from you, and then you don't get your money back. But then we are the ones who are demonized for fighting Pirating. back against that. By pirating. <laughs> if buying something is not owning it, piracy is not stealing it. I don't even pirate shit, and I vibed with that so hard. It's more than just a game preservation thing at this point. That's more a Nintendo issue rather than, like, a, just a whole gaming industry issue. Ugh. Ugh. Just... Fucking... This! This is an online service that I don't know how to run. Riverside. That we use to record high-quality recordings for our podcast. We, we don't know how to do that. We need servers to do that. We need to be online to do that. We need people to provide a service for that for us. That's what you pay a streaming service for. Not a physical thing. It's crazy how like mo how many more companies are just starting starting to do that. Because real shit... I mean, we remember the whole NFT shit back a couple of years ago where people were trying to charge for just literally images or whatever. How long until they start trying to do that for physical objects? And they're gonna call it something new? That's just called financing. People have been doing it for years when they buy shit they can't afford. I'm done. Mm. Uh, that, that, that's all I got. I was, trying to <laughs> I was trying to find a bigger mic drop than that, but I'm gonna let you wrap it up. Or, like, at least, like, let you get your thoughts out before we're done here, because I'm just gonna talk my... I'm getting to, the like, the double D point where I start to talk myself in circles. Like, that part of the hour, you know, where I just... <laughs> but I'm like, and fuck this! And fuck that! <laughs> and Fuck! Fuck! Like, I'm, I'm starting to get and to that it's point, like, so... And then it's like, by the way, here are our plugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, I boy. guess for my closing thoughts, too, it's like, I think now is... If there was any time for us to push back on this bullshit, it is definitely now. Because now as you, like, you know, as we're, you know, as it's, what, Friday or so, I guess, when this episode's gonna go up? Yeah. You know, the U.S. government has finally, like, taken notice and actually doing something towards Adobe and, like, kind of just, like, you know, who's to say, like, how that lawsuit may, hap may like, pan out? Because, if I can I mean, guess, it's probably, mm -hmm. they're probably just going to charge them an inordinate amount of money. And then Adobe is just going to continue doing what they're doing and just write yeah. it off as a loss. That's all that's going to happen. Which, it's the same know, thing they did yeah. to Fox News. When Fox News was peddling all that bullshit that the election was stolen, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. When you're just peddling it on TV, you can say whatever you want. But the second it gets to a court, you know, words actually matter again. Yeah. And they got charged a ridiculous amount of money, but they're continuing to do what they're doing. Yeah. So, like it was no big deal in the end. So, yeah. I guess definitely fast forward. This is probably not going to be like that big of a deal. But anything, they're probably the going to uptick it and make it even more expensive because of how much <laughs> yeah, money the, yeah. how much money the government took from them. So, guys, if you are in the market and need an Adobe Media program to do something, whether it be Photoshop or Premiere, go to YouTube, look up them guides from our favorite Indian uh, YouTubers. And they will tell you a guide to go and download uh, Adobe Premiere for free. And you don't have to pay their shitty fucking subscription fee to use their service. And 
you, you you just gotta like you gotta like just respect our Indian YouTubers out here telling us all these guides to get this shit because let me tell you man it's not gonna get any cheaper that's for sure it is for 100% sure that it is not gonna get any cheaper any of this shit because because uh, again they they know that they can get away with it because they've been doing they've been getting away with it for fucking years now at this point and that's why like you know for any of you who like if, if this resonates with you like obviously yeah speak with your wallet and at the same time pirate the shit out of all their stuff look up a youtube guide and just pirate the fuck out of it pirate the ever living fuck out of them <laughs> <laughs> i do not endorse nor do i unendorse the words of my co-host and associate here but i will also say that once again if piracy or like if if buying something is not owning it piracy isn't stealing it because what these companies are basically doing to you is piracy in reverse and how many people do you know actually get arrested for piracy it literally does not happen because literally everyone does it. It's the power to the people. Mm -hmm. They can't take us all. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what it is, honestly. And uh, again, I'm not saying I do. I, well, I do think there is a difference between piracy and uh, an ethical piracy. I, you know, there is the goodness of people who want to pay for these things and want to have a convenient way to do it. And, you know, want to, like, you know, pay for that convenience and have it be the way that it is. Not, not everybody wants to resort to pirating. It's not like the troll in the corner who just doesn't want to pay for anything ever, regardless of how good or bad a company is or whatever, or how good or bad the media is that they're stealing from. Uh, most people just want to pay for it earnestly, and most people do pay for it earnestly and do it. But there's less and less people doing that now because y'all just suck so hard. That's the problem. It's like, we, instead of you, everybody went to you to get away from cable because of all the predatory things of cable, and you became the very thing you swore that you would defeat. <laughs> and to end this podcast, we're just going to use that as definitive, absolutely exemplary proof. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. That's our show. We hope you liked the, uh, we hope you liked it. Here are the plugs. Uh, you can subscribe to us. Not, but not for money. Uh, that's uh, that's for free. You don't got to do that. Uh, on YouTube.com slash Nintunist. We're trying to get a lot more visual aid in the podcast right now is what I'm doing. That's why I asked you to send the articles to me on beyond the fact that I can mm -hmm. read them. I, I screen cap them and I put them on screen mm -hmm. uh, so people can read them. We've gotten feedback. Yeah, yeah, I've been in the noticing that. Yeah, we've gotten feedback in the comments for that uh, because people will be like, visual aids, please. And I'm like, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So shout out to the ones if you don't care about visual aids, which some people don't. I listen to the official podcast on Spotify. Check us out on Spotify, because we're still there for some reason, even though, like, way more people listen on YouTube. Uh, give us a five-star review on Spotify real quick on your mobile device. It takes two seconds, and it really helps with our search engine optimization, as well as check us out on Apple Podcasts if you prefer that instead. We love y'all. I'm gonna go jack off and uh, then eat something <laughs> afterwards. And then cry at the realization that I'm working a full-time job and I don't want to work for a living. And then cry once I realize I have a full-time job and I should be grateful for that. It's that fucking seesaw that we have, like, with, with that shit, you know? Yep. It's just, it is what it is. But uh, we'll see you guys next week. And we hope you have a great weekend. Um, cancel your subscription. Podcast. Yeah, go cancel your subscription. It's probably not worth it. Probably. <laughs> <laughs>